So, welcome to lecture number 2 of this module, module number 7 and in this module I will discuss the HVDC light and also sometimes called HVDC plus. Basically this HVDC light uh, the nickname or trademark given by ABB and HVDC plus is given by Siemens. So, but the technology and concept is the same that is why I will be using in this presentation as HVDC light. So, to start with let us see what are the various problems in HVDC conventional HVDC transmission system and to you can see the mostly the HVDC transmission system is used for the long distance point to point transmission. No doubt we saw also that we can go for the multi terminal HVDC links or transmission system where we can tap the power in between not it is one to one. So, but it is again it becomes very complex and also we have the limited uh, terminals like whenever you are adding more than two converters you are doing any extra converter then it becomes a multi terminal HVDC. So, already in the previous uh, lecture we saw this multi terminal DC link. So, uh, it is said that it is a mostly used for the long distance point to point transmission although some people may argue that it is not only for long distance bulk power point to point transmission, but nowadays the HVDC links are also used and they are known as the back to back connections they are very near to each other and the purpose of this HVDC link is to control the power from one region to another region one system to another system or can provide the asynchronous connection between the two systems two regions as well. But uh, in the early uh, when the people were talking about the long distance of HVDC applications they were mostly concerned about the transmitting bulk amount of power from one region to another region that is why it is said that it is mostly used for the long distance point to point transmission, but it is now not so. Now, we are also using back to back connections that as I said to control the power from one area to another area and also the sometimes the HVDC systems are also used to stabilize the AC systems normally they are the modulating the power and that is why the AC DC tr transmit systems are running parallel. So, we know the point to point because if you are going to tap the power in between then you require some extra converter and also you have to change the control philosophy which we saw in the empty DC transmission system. Another problem in conventional HVDC technology that it requires the fast communication channels between the two stations or the three stations whenever you are having a multi terminal then you require the communication channel between all the sub stations or converter stations. Why it is fast because we saw the control characteristic in the our control philosophy that uh, that module we saw that what will be the characteristic of the rectifier what will be the characteristic of the inverter they are the different. So, once it is operating in a either as I say this it can operate you know rectifier is there. So, it can operate in the two modes one can be your CIA mode that is a constant ignition angle control that is a alpha minimum control or it can operate in the constant current mode. Similarly, the inverter side it can operate in this control mode that is a CEA mode that is a constant extinction angle control as well as it can also operate in the constant current mode. In the constant current mode also there in the inverter side people are also argue that we can add the constant voltage or a constant beta control especially at this uh, connection of the CC and the CA where we require due to the various region already we have discussed this in our the previous modules. So, we require that if one converter station is working for one dedicated for voltage control or current control other will be taking care of for voltage uh, current or voltage vice versa and also we require a dedicated control that is what will be the current margin as we know in this uh, conventional HVDC the main concern that we are using the constant current source converters the CSE the current is basically maintained constant and voltage is keep on varying and varying and thereby we are controlling the power. So, this is the second uh, problem in classical HVDC technology another one that is uh, is a large reactive power support at the both the station. We know although uh, this is a DC system does not require any reactive power support in the DC line as well if you say, but at the converter stations and already we have proved that uh, in the ideal case already it has been proved that the power factor is equal to your cos alpha and alpha is the delay angle of the converter station. So, now we can find if the alpha you are keep on delaying you are changing the voltage and cos alpha is directly related to the DC voltage and the power is controlled by the DC voltage. Once your power is controlling from either reversing or 0 to certain value you are going the alpha is change once alpha is changed what is happening then your power factor requirement at the converter station is going to be high. 
So in the thumb rule, normally people say that if it's a 100 megawatt uh, HVDC line is there, then you require at least 60 percent rectifier support at the both the terminal stations. Terminal means if it is two terminal, then you are having a rectifier and inverter, so you have to put. So huge rectifier support is required. That is basically to take care of the voltage variation of the converters. Then you have to put that uh, installation and again it uh, becomes very, very bulky and the station becomes very, very large because you have to put a huge reactive power support and especially it is a capacity support we require at that end. Third, there is uh, in the conventional HVDC technology in the beginning we started using the thyristors and you know the thyristors are basically the line commuted converters we can have and you know the commuted means once you are going to turn it off you have to make this is a primary requirement of the thyristors if you want to turn it off the current flowing through the thyristor should be zero. So, in the normal way it is keep on flowing the constant current so you cannot turn it off. So, to make it turn off the current should be zero and the voltage across that thyristor should be the reversed. So, to make current zero we can use some auxiliary circuits and based on that we can make some way that we can make a zero across this and then we can turn off the thyristor. So, the, the conventional thyristors are valves, valve means it is a series of the thyristors in the series and parallel make a certain voltage level and the current carrying capacity because one thyristor unit is not able to provide complete support for that rating of the your HPDC station. So, we can use the valves and valves means that we can use the series of the thyristors as well as the parallel to make the particular rating. So, and they are use the line commuted converters. Some other concern about HPDC already explained that is also in the conventional HPDC system they introduce harmonics and not only the normal harmonics, characteristic harmonics, they also introduce the uncharacteristic harmonics. Uh, characteristic harmonics, if you remember, just I already discussed this n p plus minus 1, those are even the current harmonics. The DC side also we are having n p, the p is number of pulses, n is number of integer. So, in the DC side also we are having some harmonics. So, we require the filters for those and already in the AC side that for current harmonics we use the if it is a 6 pulse converter we use the 5th and 7th harmonics and also uh, filters and also 9th and 11th, 11th harmonics filters are used. At the same time they provide some reactive power support as well as the providing the minimum impedance path to that one. So, this is the filters are used and uh, it is very the bulky and also require the huge space. So, the harmonics are another uh, concern are the uh, this is a major concerns the cost and other things are keep on declining. So, cost was also in the beginning concern, but again thanks to the power electronics development and so on and so forth the costs are declining and in the future again the break even when the AC and DC may go down presently it may be 6 to 700 kilometers, but it may again in the future it may go down. So, to avoid all these problems this conventional HBDC system, the HBDC light or HBDC plus again I want to reiterate that HBDC light the trade name given by ABB, HBDC plus is the name given by the Siemens, but the concept is the same and both are using now instead of the CSC that is a current source converters. Now, they are going to replace these by using the voltage source converters and we know the advantage and disadvantage of the current source and the voltage source converters when I talked in the beginning of this module 1 or module 2 there. So, what changes they are doing in this? The basic change that they are the power transmission through the SBDC utilizing the voltage source converters as I mentioned and they are using the IGBTs. IGBTs is nothing but insulated gate bipolar transistors. Now, just see here it is a transistor technology. However, in the conventional we are using the thyristor technology both are the different. So, using this which is the extinguishes the current more faster and the less energy loss than the GTUs. GTUs are gate turn of thyristors. So, this is another grade of a thyristors. The conventional thyristors you cannot turn it off by simple giving the gate pulse. You have to make the current across the flowing through the thyristor should be 0 in the conventional thyristor, but in the GTUs by putting the negative gate pulse you can turn it off even though the current is a flowing full capacity current flowing through the uh, GTUs. But you have require some of the circuits because there will be some transient where certainly the current is doing this. So, that we use some extra circuit to minimize those transients. So, this HBDC light the basic concept the CSC converters that is the current source converters are replaced with the voltage source converters and they are utilizing the IGBTs that is a insulated gate, gate pole transistors. So, the major difference here that the transistors are used rather than thyristors. So, uh, it is uh, again that is why here I have written the HVDC light 
R plus that is why here I am right now using both, but in the sum of the my presentation you will find only HBDC light because we find more literature on HBDC light compared to the HBDC plus. So, but again as I said the, they are using the voltage source converter the VSC of HBDC. If you will see the first HBDC light the pilot transmission for the 3 megawatt only it was a very small it was a pilot project 3 megawatt and the plus minus 10 kilo volt in the March 1997 it was established in the sphere and the plus minus uh, plus minus 10 kV as it indicates it is a bipolar and the bipolar that is why it is one is operating on the positive polarity and other is operating on the negative polarity. And the voltage level between these two poles it is a 20 kV because from the 0 is a 10 kV and from below the 0 it is a minus 10 kV. The first commercial product because this was the pilot and the testing pro project. So, the first commercial project basically just came into the practice in 1999 and this was having the carrying the 50 megawatt and that it is a plus minus 80 kV. You can see from here the summary of the various projects the commercial projects which is in the table and in this table. They see that this is a nothing but this is a Gotland Sweden project. The Gotland is one island already I explained this in the beginning of the this uh, HBDC course that the Gotland is island of the Sweden which is uh, almost it is a uh, 70 kilometers away from the mainland and uh, that is uh, and uh, it was uh, just provided this uh, HBDC light project and it was commissioned in 19 it is started operating in 1999. So, current carrying capacity uh, this uh, power capacity was 50 megawatt and the voltage level as plus minus 80 kV means again it is a bipolar. The distance here you can see it is a 70 kilometers it was used it is a C cable and it is a two cables are used because it is having the bipolar. So, two cables one is negative one is positive it is operating and it connects even the wind farm to the load center because that island is having the full of wind potential and that is connected through this the cables and that is a C cable. Second uh, project it is a uh, actually there are so many smaller smaller projects also came in. Uh, in the Europe as well as in other part of the world, but the here it is a listed those are the bigger projects and bigger commercial projects here. So, this another is a called the direct uh, link that is a in Australia and it was commissioned uh, in 2002 and it was carrying uh, 3 into 60 because the 3 lines were there. So, why it was in a once uh, bipolar is having 60 here we are using this 50. So, here you can say 3 means we are had the 3 bipolar operation of the 60 each means the total capacity that is flowing it is a your 180 megawatt and again the voltage level was plus minus 80 kV between the two bipoles. That is why here you can see it is a 6 we have multiplied because we are having the 6 cables one cable for positive one cable for negative. So, it is one bipolar. So, similarly we are having 3. So, it is a 6 multiplied by 65 and it connects basically the two regional electricity markets and here this length is a 65 kilometers. Another which was basically established uh, this is a, a cross sound cable in the US 2002 again and it was having a huge power that is 330 megawatt and the voltage level also you can see it is a plus minus 150 volt. So, it is a larger side, but here again it is a two cables again the bipole and the 42 kilometers and basically it was the power transmission to the long islands it was per used. In the Australia again the Murray link that is the Murray link is called in Australia in 2002 again it was having the 200 megawatt and again the voltage level they increase from the 80 here kilo volt to 150 kilo volt and the line length now you can see it is 180 kilometers. So, it is not possible to have a cable it is more than 100 kilometers even though earlier people were only having the cable of the 50 kilometers, but now with the different uh, you know polymers and different uh, insulating materials here and there now it is uh, said that we cannot have a cable more than 100 kilometer, uh, 100 kilometer because whatever the power you are injecting it will be the taken only the charging of this cable. So, this basically this link connects the two regional electricity market and controls the power flow between the two regions that is a very important. So, it is used to control the power over that. Another in the Norway in 2005 this troll A this is a, it is again the its voltage is not so high, but it came later and it is again the 2 into 40 megawatts means they had the bipolar operation plus minus whenever you will find it is a bipolar. So, it is the two bipoles and that is each is having the 40 megawatts the total power carrying capacity over all this link is your 80 megawatt and it has a 68 kilometers. So, here 4 is the 2 multiplied by 2 is uh, the 4 cables and this is a power uh, compressors to increase the natural gas production on oil platform and tall A oil platform provides 10 percent of the Europe's oil 
that's need this is basically used there to uh, in the oil platform basically another in the finland it is uh, now then 2006 it is uh, uh, so very high and it is you can see it is a 350 megawatt power that is carrying and the voltage level is also very high this is a plus minus 150 kilovolt and distance also you can see the distance is 105 kilometers and the two uh, bipoles are there the improved security of the electricity supply in the baltic state and the finland this is used and this is the bigger one so it is only listed the uh, some of the commercial products that is uh, here i have listed the five commercial project but from 2000 onwards also there are so many projects are commissioned and also the some of the projects are under the process undergoing and then future again we'll have more and more such type of hbdc a voltage source converter based technology for the HVDC transmission system. Now to these are the first I talked about the problem of the conventional HVDC transmission system then I talked about the various projects those are already existing and now let us concentrate on the advantages of HVDC light. Uh, these are taken from some of the reports here and there and collected from the various sources. It is not my own advantage which is I am just expressing my views, but it is taken from the various literature which is existing either it is from net or Google or you can say the explore. So, you will find all these things which I have summarized here. So, it is said that uh, this HVDC voltage source converter based technology is uh, economical even at the low power range. No doubt if you are going for the conventional technology for the low power range it is very expensive because the cost of the converters and the converter stations it is very expensive because you have to put the filters you have to put the converters you have to reach the cooling etc so all if you will see then break even points becomes very large if you are going to carrying the less amount of power if the power transmission is more you will find that the break even point that is a preference of the HVDC is a better than HVAC if you are going for the large power. So, this HVDC voltage source converter based technology is basically economical even at the low power range means if you are going to transmit lower power like 30, 40, you will see here the most of the powers are not very high it is a 60 maximum is 350 megawatt. But if you see the conventional power now the HVDC transmission system they are carrying more than 1000 megawatt more carrying more than 2000, 3000 megawatt power. So, it is very, very high. So, this is even though economical for the low power range as well. Another major advantage of HVDC voltage source converter technology is that we can control real and reactive power independently in the two HVDC light converters. So, here if you see the control philosophy that we were using in the conventional uh, HVDC transmission system, it is basically we were controlling the voltage and the current and then thereby power one is controlling this current another is controlling the voltage and we were maintaining. So, it was not possible to control the power uh, DC power we were controlling the real power it was we were controlling, but we were unable to control the reactive power independently. No doubt once you are the firing is changing your reactive power is also going to change. So, you are doing, but still it is not independent control based on the power. But here in this technology we can control both the active that is the real power and also the reactive power that is a Q power is controlled independently in the two HVDC voltage source converters and that is a great advantage. Here the power are independently means you can control the DC power, you can control the reactive power that we need and that is a that is the beauty of this HVDC voltage source converter based technology. Another uh, advantage uh, it is stated that uh, this HVDC voltage source converters can control the AC voltage rapidly compared to your conventional HVDC transmission system. The reason is that the converter which we use in the conventional HVDC transmission system they are the line commuted and there is a lot of slowness in that one and sometimes they say it is a uh, controls much faster even though 20 times faster than your the conventional HVDC transmission system. So, it controls the bo AC voltage rapidly compared to your the conventional trans uh, conventional HVDC transmission system. Another of the major advantage is that with the help of HVDC voltage source converter, we can possibly connect the passive loads. As I said, it was not possible to connect the passive load in this conventional HVDC because we have to control the current one way in one converter another there. 
So what is happening here in the passive load? I mean that you can have one converter, you can directly connect the load and then you can utilize and you can see the power control and the reactive power which is not possible. So here this since we do not require the big communication channel between the two converters with this technology we can control independently, we can control the real and reactive power independently thereby we can also control the passive loads independently without any problem. Another here advantage although this is also an advantage of conventional HVDC transmission system that the no contribution to the short circuit current. Whenever there is a fault normally you know the circuit breakers where there is a bus you are having so many AC lines if the fault is there at that bus now we calculate and we will see how much the fault is contributed by which lines. If your HVDC line is there and you can control very fast then we can say the fault level contribution by that line is almost nil. No doubt in the HVDC line what is the fault level just I will explain here. Suppose you are having a here a bus where so many so many this your lines are AC lines are there and if you are having a DC here conventional I am talking here the conventional your converter station and then you are having. So, whenever there is a fault here three phase fault now we can see the contribution of the fault current from this line this line and if other lines are there and what will be the contribution was from this HVDC link. If this is a slow so during that fault during the few cycles few milliseconds this will be also contributing the fault current. But if can control very effectively very fast we can say the fault contribution here can we can make it 0 and sometimes we can take in other way we can stabilize the system by controlling this one. So, that is why here this advantage is mentioned that the no contribution to the short circuit current because we can control very fast. So, that is line is almost we can we can assume that it is not going to contribute the fault level at that bus. So, whenever you are adding the transmission line the fault level at that bus is going to increase as you know the impedance seen up for this fault if you are adding another line here the fault will be going to increase because all these lines going to be parallel of this. So, that is why we require the designing the circuit breaker etcetera that what should be the circuit breaker rating etcetera that is used to uh, that is a fun, uh, that is a calculated based on the fault level at that bus and contributed by the various lines. Another advantage is that the no need of the fast communication between the two converter station as I said we can control these two converter stations independently. Even though there is only one converter station if you are connecting a converter station with the passive loads it is only one converter station. So, here the communication between these two is suppose you are having two bilateral here the one is a rectifier another is the inverter. So, it is a fast communication is not required between these two channels and they can work independently and that is the beauty of this HVDC voltage source converters. Another here advantage is that uh, HVDC transmission system based on the voltage source converter technology can operate in all the four coordinates of the your operation means if you are having here you can see this is the four coordinate and if you see our conventional uh, HVDC transmission system we had if it is your I this is your voltage we find that we can have the operation is these two here this is your rectifier mode and if you are going this side then it is inverter mode because the power voltage is reverse the power is you know the power is this technology P is your V into I if voltage is reverse then you are going in the inverter mode. But with the help of this we can even though operate in this coordinate at this coordinate as well having the voltage uh, uh, on the y axis and this is your current is a, uh, uh, x axis. So, we can operate this uh, because we have the full freedom to into control and then we can operate in all the four coordinates that is uh, the beauty of this and whenever you want you can control here and there. So, this that is why it is said this can operate in the all four coordinates of the V i plane. Another why uh, basically why it is a possible to use that we can use the pulse width modulators PWM scheme that can be used and you know the if you are using the P pulse width modulator scheme you can achieve a lot of advantage those where the problem in the conventional SBDC such as the harmonics and other things we can minimize the harmonics we can minimize the reactive power demand we can fire in a such way using the pulse width modulated control there are the various type of the pulse width modulated schemes are there that can be used here and based on that we can solve the various problems 
those were in the conventional HVDC transmission system. So, using the pulse width, we can improve the power factor, we can improve the uh, harmonics injection, means there will be no uh, minimum harmonic injection in the system and also we can operate very effectively in all the four coordinate of VI play. Another that is the advantage that is opportunity to transmit any amount of current of power over the long distance via cable. Here the opportunity to the transmit any amount of current of current of power over the long distance, I mean to see that it is also in HVDC that we can load the system up to its the thermal limit. Whatever the current is that uh, is the thermal limit is there, we can go up to that limit and we can load. And in this cable, because the DC cables are going to be more and more popular, because the AC cable you know the charging is a big concern and you cannot load even up to their uh, thermal limit because the charging is a huge requirement. But if you can go here, then you can use this HVDC light. Means one side you can have a converter, then you can have a DC cable and then you can have AC. So, it uh, is no limitations and you can go for the longer distance and it is a very small and you can control all the way independently real and reactive power. So, this is giving opportunity to transmit the current limit, not just any amount which we cannot go up to infinite amount, there is some limitation means that we can go up to the thermal limit without making any problem. Another people say now question is why this HBDC, uh, this ABB has uh, called it HBDC light that uh, it is they say it is a really light in weight. What does it mean? Means it has a low complexity and why the low complexity? Because it requires the fewer components, because we do not require the filters. We require the filters of certain magnitude because we can minimize the filters by control itself. So, the we require the fewer components. So, we require the lesser size, lesser speed, uh, let us say space and that thereby we can say it is a light in the weight means it is a, if you will see the conventional uh, HVDC converter station is a very bulky, you require a big room for your converter station, then you require the cooling, they require the filters, all the things we are keep on adding is a very big station. But with the help of this uh, voltage source converters, we can minimize so many things and you know the size of reactors are nothing but the size of uh, transformers. We require the smoothing reactors, we require the various filters and if you see the inductors and other values are used. You see for the even though higher, uh, uh, the lower order frequency 5th and 7th, you will find that reactors just like a transformers. So, uh, in nutshell here I can say this uh, complexity is low and uh, I can say thanks to fewer components those are used. Also, we do not use the line commutated circuits uh, for commutation of the thyristors. We can simply just uh, turn it off and turn it on whenever we require. But however, in the conventional grade uh, HVD technology, if you are using thyristors, then you require some extra circuit to turn it off the thyristors while they are conducting. Also, as I said, they are small, small in the sense the small space is required. They are very compact and that is why it is called HVDC light. Another advantage that you know that is uh, now the windmills or wind farms whatever you are calling. Now, people are putting the, all these wind farms not only on the on shore, but they are also on the off shore and they are also putting in the sea because most of the in European sea they are the shallow and the, most of the farms are in the sea and by the way we have to collect the power from them. So, then if you are using your AC cables. Now, the question is which type of wind farm you are using? You are using the double fed induction generator or you are using your uh, uh, induction uh, simple uh, squirrel cage induction generators or you are using the permanent magnet synchronous generators. All these here the technologies are existing, but here the most commonly use the double fed induction generators for the larger capacity. So, if you are using the induction uh, double fed induction generator DFIG we call it, then the power which you are putting uh, connecting to the system, it is AC power. So, once you are having the AC power and then you are using the long AC cable maybe of 70, 80 or 100 kilometers, then the charging and other problems is a big concern. So, what we can use? We can use the DC cables. We can use the converter station very near to uh, in the very near to the collector of the wind farm. If you are using the conventional, then it becomes very bulky. As I said, you require huge space and the sea putting all this thing is very, very expensive. But now, since uh, having the fewer components, smaller, compact, we can put the HBDC voltage source converter near to the collector system of the wind farms or wind mill and then we can have the DC cable and finally, we can take it to the show and finally, we can again transmit 
in, in terms of uh, we can convert from DC to AC and finally, we can connect to the grid or distribution or transmission whatever the grid you want to connect. So, it is very useful for the wind mills and we will see some of the application in our previous uh, in the next lectures thus I will discuss about. Another uh, advantage that it can offer the asynchronous operation this is true and this is equally valid for all the applications even though even the conventional HVDC transmission system can also can also connect the two asynchronous means the two different frequency systems can be connected by the DC links that is no doubt, but this offers more advantage that it can very fast control very better one in the various way we can control rear and reactive power as well. So, this offers more advantages in asynchronous operation compared to the conventional HVDC transmission system. So, with this uh, advantage I can say it offers a lot of advantage and but still we can see the IGBTs based technology is still it is not so cheap compared to our conventional HVDC technology because here the IGBTs are still expensive compared to the thyristors. So, the whole converter is still you can see just in this example as you saw here the ratings are still not very high compared to your thyristor technology, but again we can thanks to the power electronics development and we can say in the future there will be surprises we can go for the all these things we can go for the more than 1000 megawatt power over this higher voltage maybe plus minus 500 or plus minus 800. Once this IGBT technology will be more mature we will have in the lesser cost higher rating development etcetera will take place and then we can go for this more and more. So, that is why this HVDC voltage source converters nowadays ABB, Siemens and all other manufacturing companies now they are doing a lot of research, lot of other developments is happening in this area. So, that in the future we will find this HVDC that is based on the voltage source converter will be more and more useful compared to your current source converters. So, these are the advantages we saw. Now, we have to go for CC HVDC light technology or HVDC plus here. It basically, the HVDC light is a high voltage direct current transmission technology and the transmission up to this 330 megawatt and for the DC range the 150 voltage range. So, we saw with the various application here even though we saw sometimes uh, some short term rating is a 350 megawatt and but the voltage level is right now it is only limited 150 kilo volt, but again some of that is going to be synchronized with maybe even though not I have noticed, but maybe the voltage rating is more than this 1 plus minus 150 kilo volt range. But I am sure in the future we are going to get a higher voltage level and higher power transmission via the voltage source converter HBDC system. So, here in this it consists of again two AC to DC converters stations and a pair of underground cable interconnecting each converter stations means what here we are getting that is similar to that here we are having this is one station and that is we require the two cables if you are using the two bipolars and here you are having another uh, sorry another converter here that is the recti inverter here I can say and here you are having the rectifier and if you are having the bipolar operation then it is a grounded and then you are having another one here and then you can operate here with this this is a grounded and then I can say this is your. So, this is your operating a positive this is negative and then it is a bipolar operation that we are having. So, this technology provides the HVDC light converters with the switching speed 27 times faster than the traditional HVDC thyristor control converter. Comparing the thyristor based HVDC transmission system or converter technology which is used in the transmission system it is uh, more than 27 times faster. So, that is it is almost very fast and then we can that is why we can achieve whatever the advantage whatever the problems were there that we can overcome and we can get the advantage by this voltage source converter based HVDC transmission system and technology. Now, uh, we will go for this uh, 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 principle of HVDC light. So, the principle of HPDC light that can be understood by this diagram you can say the HPDC voltage source converter is basically composed of whole transmission system basically I am talking is composed of transformer you can see this is a transformer this is a converter transformer we call it that is a connecting your AC system then with your converter system. We are having 
the filters we also need the filter as I said in the beginning that is not that uh, even using the here the thyristors or even you IGBTs it is a free from harmonics some harmonics are injected. So, we require some of the filters maybe it is again the bandpass filters etcetera that we can use the some filters and filters are used and then we require the DC capacitors that is a more important we use the here the converters you can say this is a converters here we use the reactors here and we also use the capacitor one big difference you will find from your HBTC conventional HBTC transmission system that uh, earlier we were using this we were using the transformer we were using this uh, filter we were using this converters no doubt those converters were based on the thyristor based or the GTO based technology. But we were using here the reactors especially to smoothen the ripples of the DC as well as to have the constant DC current we are using the inductors that were the series of this converter. But instead of that we are using the capacitors and that is called the DC capacitors and they are used in this way and they are basically putting here the voltage constant. So, that is why it is the voltage source converters and it is not a current source. If you are using current source you have to use the current constant and is the ripple free and then for that you have to use the your smoothing reactors. So, the transformer is used to step down the AC voltage to satisfy the demand of commutated, uh, commutated solid state devices and self commuted they are not line commuted. So, they are self commuted and the such as the series and the parallel combination of GTOs, IGBTs or the IGCTs now is again people are talking the insulated gate control thyristors that can be also used. Here the transformer here we are using if you are taking this is a converter you can say from AC to DC here means your AC voltage is higher and your DC voltage is lower because the again due to the limitations on the converter side the voltage is again as I say that we are going up to only plus minus 150 kilo volt and this side we can have even the 760 kilo volt or maybe AC side we can have the 1100 uh, kilo volt. So, this transformer is basically nothing but the step down transformer if you see from here this is your primary uh, always you know the step up and step down transformers are designated and this classification is only valid if they are connected in the system. So, which is your primary source which is your secondary when it is connected when you can call step down. So, if your power is flowing from the high voltage to low voltage then we can say this is a step down transformer. So, this is a step down transformer from high voltage AC to DC and then uh, this side the lower voltage and then we are rectifying here and that the DC voltage is coming here. So, this is a step down same way this is a rectifier operation because from AC to DC, but if you are using the same here concept that the power is flowing from this side to this side. So, this because this becomes your inverter and this inverters you can say this lower voltage DC now it is coming all the way here we are going to step up because the this side the voltage is lesser than compared to this side. So, this power is flowing from this side to this side then this transformer is just as a step up transformer and here this is used to the self commuted side the solid state device because we are having the limited the voltage rating and other things and that is why we it is used. Now, the high frequency components caused by the switching or switches of walls are isolated from the power system by the filters. The filters are used that whenever the high because the switching is very fast and the switching harmonics those are going to enter in the system they are used by this filters basically. So, whenever the switching harmonics are there they are coming here in the AC system that must be filtered out here and that is why the filters are used. So, we can filter out the high frequency. So, we can pass the high frequency and put it to the ground and only we can pass the fundamental or the nominal frequency power in that side. So, the key part of this HVDC lights are the converter which can be realized uh, by the conversion of AC to DC by directly. So, it is always from AC to DC or DC to AC that can be utilized and it is a very fast control that is a possible. Another difference as I said that we are having here the DC capacitors in this HVDC voltage source converter and you know the wind voltage source converter means you are connecting the DC with a capacitor. If you are using your injector means it is a current source converter it is a very well and the general it is very you know vague definition although people are defining this voltage source and the current source converters in the different way. So, the DC capacitors are used at the DC voltage source because here the charging and the discharging is done by the DC capacitors in this, uh, this system which need being charged and uh, recharged because you are charging and recharging whatever the power which is flowing this basically the capacitor here works as a shock absorber 
means whenever the power is going from here and it is not transmitted completely to another end, this capacitor gets charged means it stores that energy and the voltage rise and then whenever it is required suppose you are putting less energy and more energy is withdrawn then this capacitor is discharged. So, charging and discharging are done here the capacitors are used for this so the always charge and discharge and we require a big DC, uh, DC capacitors and that is a major difference. However, in the conventional we are using inductors. Inductors were also storing the energy when the current is changing with the frequency of the current was changing. So, half L I square you know the current is there so energy is stored, but that is a current base. Now, uh, to see this whole uh, here the philosophy which I, I said here suppose this is a one side you are having another side. So, that can be here seen by the equivalent circuit you can see how we are going. So, this is you can see this is uh, the current which is flowing from here we are having the this is a uh, this uh, inverter operation we are having uh, singly single phase is represented by you can say I d is flowing and thus we are having our I g bit is shear based technology and this is the voltage that is from 0 to this u d and I can say this is your inductor which is connected and the current is flowing and this is going this side. So, we can write what will be the power that is a magnitude uh, here the magnitude and the phase angle decide the reactive power and the active power exchange between the AC to DC system here the DC this side this is AC I am believing this is power is flowing from the DC to AC side. Similarly, the same concept can be utilized from the AC to DC system as well the power transmitted by the DC light is given by how much power thus we are flowing from here that will be basically the voltage here this is the side we are having the AC. So, this uh, apparent power that is a, a complex power here a S b if taking the mod it is apparent power, but this S b is the complex power that is the you are having real and reactive component there is a real component is p and your reactive component is q that can be written no doubt here since we are having the single phase. So, it is a three phase multiplied by the phase voltage u and multiplied by i e r the current which is flowing here. So, this uh, you can say V i conjugate it is a very well formula you know under root 3 term is appearing because the voltage here we are taking the single phase the phase voltage because if a 3 phase system. So, it is a the uh, under root 3 multiplied by here the line to line and this is a current. So, we are this u f we are taking line to line. So, this is a 3 phase power. So, whatever the DC power it is going it is going to be the 3 phase AC power. So, this always if the we assume the converter is lossless then we can say the DC power real power will be equal to your uh, AC real power. So, this under root 3 basically term is appearing because this u f we are taking line to line. If we are taking this phase then this will be 3. So, this under root 3 term is appearing you know it is a very uh, very basic concept of electrical engineering and this is I conjugate and that is I conjugate we can write what is I R here it is a the voltage this minus this because we have taken this direction. So, this u c minus u f and then here sorry we have left this conjugate you can make here conjugate. So, this is we are putting divided by your the z r and z r is nothing but this is a what is the in, uh, impedance between this your u c and u f. So, you will see the terminology which r use s b this is a magnitude here it is a is the apparent power of S B D C light p is the active power q is the reactive power u f is the voltage of a c system as I said it is the a c system side here u c is the uh, output voltage of the converter which is coming here and z r is clearly you can see here is the equivalent impedance of the converter system including the transformer reactors etcetera that is coming all together here in this impedance. Now, you can say what is the reactors you can see this you are having reactors you are having the all this impedance here of the transformer etcetera all this together is basically club in this your z r. So, this is there and this s b we can write here. From here if you are putting this all the values if you are writing in this phasor form these values these are the complex variables complex u and z everything complex here z r should be also conjugated because whole this term is the i conjugate we are writing. So, and putting all these things we can write this real power that is active power and the reactive power can be separately derived from that equation 1 that we can write the real power will be equal to your u f into u c sin delta divided by omega l and we are assuming the l is the inductance of that is appearing due to the transformer as well as the reactor. And the reactive power can be written by u f that is u f minus u c cos delta upon omega that is x we call normally omega l. So, the delta is basically phase angle between the u f and the u c the voltages 
and the L is the equivalent uh, reactors convert of equivalent reactants of the converter along with the transformer etcetera and omega is the nominal uh, nominal this is a uh, speed that is radian per second this omega is the frequency of the system that is a 2 pi f you know it very well and f is the frequency of the system. When alpha is zero, uh, greater than 0 means alpha positive means this p it becomes the positive which is flowing from your going to the AC system and it seems that is uh, you can see this u f is the leading u, u c and the active power will be the transfer from the AC system to DC system and the converter is work to rectify. Now, if you are taking that is another here in this derivation I took for the inverter system, but we can equally write the equation for the rectifier system and based on this delta we can say whether it is going into the rectifier system or it is coming out from the rectifier system it decided by the delta what you have taken the this u of delta or u c delta all these things you can very clearly you can define and you can find the power is going here. One thing you can find here this reactive power the reactive power here we are having the u f and u c and your delta. So, this reactive power that you can control as I said it is a very control variable we can independently this and this we can control because here you can control the u c and this converter will generate reactive power if this value is positive if the u f is more than u c cos delta then this value is positive means it is generating reactive power in the rectifier side and it is again the reverse is also true and it will be absorbing the reactive power on the contrary if it is a reverse one is there. So, you can see this real and reactive power they can be controlled independently we can control the delta here one side we can control the u c and by this we can control the p and your real and reactive power independently. So, in this uh, uh, and the remaining things we will discuss in this our next lecture now here I want to summarize that uh, this H v in this lecture what we did we basically saw the various problems of conventional HBTC transmission system already I just discussed very in detail although the same thing was also discussed in the very first lectures uh, of the module first where we discussed the various problems compared at uh, that time I compare your AC system and the DC system in this one I would compare the HBDC voltage source converter and the voltage HBDC current source converter current source converter based HBDC transmission system means here that we call the conventional system and whenever we are talking this uh, voltage source converter based HBDC system means is HBDC light or HBDC plus we also saw the various components and then we saw the what will be the real and reactive power how it is uh, flowing and how it is going and that is also derived in this this lecture. In this next lecture we will see the various control philosophy, we will see the various uh, cable approaches and also I will talk about the hybrid transmission system having the HBDC light already having in the AC and DC system means if you are having already DC conventional DC system if you are putting this HBDC with the voltage source converters what will be the advantage what will be the uh, what will be the various impact basically we will discuss in the next lecture. Also we will find that the multi infeed HVDC system because you are having the multi terminal systems where you are having the and then you are having HVDC light and then what will be the various gain we can have that will be discussed in our next lecture. Thank you.